that uh, it's hard to win um, in the SEC. Um, that was uh, evident today. Um, you know, look, I, I could I could go through a laundry list of things that we have to do better, but the fact of the matter is, our guys wanted to win. Uh, they were prepared to win. They were prepared to um, play a team that was coming off a di disappointing loss, and we knew that they were going to play hard today, and they did. Uh, it's a well-coached football team. Uh, Coach Pittman does a great job. I thought Barry Odom was um, called a great game um, defensively. Their team was prepared, and, and they were a great challenge for us today. But we found a way to win. Uh, on the road and and that's really what this is about in terms of when you play in a league like this and in particular the SEC West West find a way to win <coughs> and um, that's what I'm proud of I'm proud of our guys having the mental toughness to um, to battle and find a way to win a football game when um, we were challenged the way we were today so um, you know, that's kind of my takeaway. Um, I'm, I'm not sitting here disappointed. I am excited um, that we won the football game in, in a very difficult um, environment uh, where a team was coming off. Uh, and, and our guys knew that. We're in a different realm now. We're, we're, <laughs> we're being um, hunted, and we're going to get everybody's best shot. And, and they just, they understand that. Um, so... Uh, we got some things to work on, uh, and uh, we'll enjoy this victory, and uh, we'll come back um, prepared for um, UAB at, in, at senior night. So with that, we'll get you guys yeah, questions. Great, Dan, bro, Dan, <coughs> obviously, Harold Perkins, the game. I mean, you, you talk about how you keep him in simple roles, but I mean, what does that say about how special he is that's in that role? Yeah, I mean, I, look, there's a about eight tackles, four sacks, two forced fumbles. Um, all over the field, impacted the game, obviously, to the level where, you know, we, we win the game um, because of his final play, too. Um, Multi-dimensional player. Um, makes a great play in pass coverage. Getting under, um, you know, a throw late in the game. Um, just, I don't think there's enough superlatives to talk about this young man as a true freshman. Um, Coming into his own, you can imagine he was he was awarded the game ball. But um, yeah, he's uh, <clears throat> he got sick before the game. I threw up, and uh, as we were going into our team meal, uh, team meeting, and uh, you know, I said, "Hey, you know, MJ threw up when he had his greatest game." And he said, "Who's MJ?" <laughs> I was like, "Man, I am getting so old." But uh, yeah, he's pretty special. What kind of sick was he? Uh, flu. Yeah, no problem. Four sacks. Yeah. <laughs> Koki, you have a question? Yeah, um, with, with Jane Daniels and that passing attack, what, what were some of the issues that a very open defense was recruiting for you guys there? Yeah, a lot of multiple looks. Um, he was hesitant. Um, you know, he, uh, he he just didn't have that um, aggressiveness <laughs> that he needed. Um, and he wasn't sure at some of the things. So that's, you know, we, we got to do a better job coaching him, and he's got to be more assertive. Um, and, and they did a lot of things defensively that I thought were really good. Um, you know, two or three times we had wide open receivers. Um, we, we run play action bang routes, and um, we draw the, uh, the backers up inside, and they, they rally back out and get a hand on it, knock down some short <laughs> touchdown passes. Uh, they played really well. Um, so. We've got to get better at, at coaching the, um, the position, and um, they did a really good job defensively. Um, all season you've kind of been saying that Harold Perkins has these points of growth that we haven't seen. So what areas have you seen him grow to have a game like this? Uh, I think it, his ability to drop in coverage, we saw that today, being in the right place, uh, and, and gap responsibility you know there were times earlier in the year where he would just cut a gap loose and you'd have some you know big runs and he's so much more gap conscious in, in terms of making sure that he's fitting the plays the right way sometimes he'd run around things be in the wrong gap uh, just you know that trust factor is really big now so 
far and, and, and then it looks like, well, everything is just going to work out for you. But it kind of illustrates your team is still growing, right? I mean, oh, yeah, but it's it's – Look, you still have to find ways to make plays and, and, and win these games at the end. Um, and look, we're, we're far from a finished product. Uh, I don't think anybody's in there uh, feeling like, you know, we've arrived. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, but during this journey, uh, we're still finding ways to win football games. And, and I think I said this from the very beginning. Uh, the goal uh, the, coming into this year uh, was to be better in November. Um, and to play hard and to teach this team how to win. Uh, th those were really, if you go back to my very first press conference, those, those were the tenets that, that I wanted to instill in this team. And, and those are there. They, they know how to win football games. And that's a great trait to have. Um, they, they believe they're going to win, and they find a way to win. And this is a, a perfect example of that. Josh Williams, 122 yards. Yeah. Over six yards to carry. Any superlatives for him? Just a tough, physical. You talk about if you look up strain in the dictionary. I mean, he's the guy. He just strains for everything and um, just has just a great um, effect on everybody when he's out there. Um, got a little banged up. We had to take him out. But he should be okay. Um, but just. Uh, you know, I, I, he was a game day captain again for like the third or fourth time. He just is a, he's a big influence on our team. Uh, Coach, it sounds like Sam Pittman told the Arkansas media that uh, he knew KJ Jefferson wouldn't be able to play Thursday afternoon. I guess how soon did you know, and maybe how did that affect your game plan defensively? Yeah, we we still had to prepare for the offensive structure of a quarterback that could run it and throw it, um, so it didn't. It didn't really affect it that much. We, you know, we, we kind of had to uh, prepare as if he was playing, and and then if the backup played, we were ready. Um, I thought the walk-on is a Fortin. I thought he did really well coming in. He threw a great ball down the the sideline. Um, I, thought, I thought he gave him some great energy. You know, throwing the football um, forced us, matter of fact, to do some things that. Maybe we didn't practice as much as some of the other things. Um, so he was he was a catalyst for him. And then yeah. you, you touched on the Razorback defense earlier. Um, what what specifically did you see from the pass reps that made them so effective? Well, <clears throat> we ran into quite a few of them. Um, they did a really good job of staying on the edge. They did not want Jaden outside the pocket. Um, we should have been stepping up in the pocket a lot more. Uh, we tried to get outside. They were not going to let us outside. Um, they stayed on the edges. There were no four techniques. These guys stayed in fives, um, stayed to the level of the quarterback. I thought that they were well coached in terms of what they were trying to accomplish. I thought they did a really good job. Coach, um, the two early turnovers that Jaden had, do you think that kind of affected him moving forward? And after the Auburn game, you said we can't win with 85 yards passing. Great. 86 today. Do you just think it was just kind of an outlier just to tell today win? Yeah, I mean, we've thrown for 400, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the ability to run the football, you've got to be able to run the football and, and set up at least some kind of offensive structure. And, and we played so well defensively. Um, yeah, look, it's not something that we want to make a living at, John. It, it, you know, but I, I think that there have been some some circumstances versus some of the teams that we've played, it's allowed us to play the game that way. Um, the turnovers, <clears throat> I think we've got to do a better job. I mean, both of them were off of zone reads, and um, one of them was a throw, and one of them was a pull. Uh, we just got to do a better job, and, and I'll put that on coaching, that we've got to do a better job of, of, of spending more time on some of those, uh, what I would call conflict reads. Uh, Coach, seven sacks today. I mean, can you just chalk it up to a good defensive play call game or just a bad game for the offensive line? No. I, look, sacks are overrated when they come to offensive lines issues. You know, sometimes it's the, as I mentioned, the quarterback causes sacks. Sometimes it's the, the back. Um, that That's not fitting. Um you know, when you break it all down, uh, you don't want your quarterback sacked at all. Um, like I said, I think <clears throat> they did a really good job of bringing pressures. And I think we, 
we, we probably needed to do a better job overall in pass protection. You know, I'm not giving the offensive line a pass here. Um, but anytime you're talking about sacks, you're, you, you should look at everybody, um, including um, the coaching of it. You know, we all are responsible for that. My coach has time for two more right here. And then Wilson. You had a couple transfers from up here that played a lot of spring ball. Yeah. What kind of contributors have they been for you this year? Well, I would say first and foremost, they, they fit in really well in terms of uh, the culture. Um, you know, they were in a really good program here uh, at, at Arkansas where they do the right things. Um, they came in and were good models for doing things the right way. So they really helped me early on in making sure we had guys doing things the right way. So uh, Joe and Greg were outstanding in that respect. Um, as football players, they're good players. Um, and they've contributed, um, but I would say that their contributions were as important off the field as they were on the field. Wilson, Brian, you're pretty aggressive on fourth down tonight, uh, or this afternoon, I guess, uh, particularly even here in territory a few times. Just what was the thought process behind those uh, moments, and when did you go for that those spots? Well, I think you know I use analytics, um, you know, in making some of those calls, but today, um, for example, I punted on fourth and one late in the game. I think it was about two minutes or so left in the game. That was a go uh, analytically um, to go for that. I chose not to. Um, they were out of timeouts. I thought that we were playing better defense than we were offense. Um, felt like it was the wise thing. We had a bad snap and a poor kick uh, resulted. We got a good break. The ball stayed in bounds. We got decent field position, got the subsequent turnover. So it ended up being the right decision. So sometimes it's a gut feeling, um, and sometimes I use analytics to make those decisions. All right, thank you.